Hey guys. So, somebody messaged me the other day and asked me how I iron my felt. Normally, I don't if I don't have to. I try to stay away from it as much as I can, but in this case, I did want to give you an example. I do have the back here, and you can see it has kind of a heavy line in there. I use the same way to also iron my cross stitch, which I will tell you how I do that in a few minutes. But with this, what I do is I lay down a towel and I put a dish towel over it. Dish towels are a little bit thinner and they'll be a little bit easier to iron. Do not use steam. If you do not pre-wash your Bucilla sheets of felt, which sometimes it says in the directions to do, I don't. Um, I've never done it ever. Uh, the steam could actually make the dye in reds or blues or greens actually seep, which can cause dye bleed or discoloration. I, I also recommend that you don't iron the felt without anything covering it, just in case, because sometimes the felt can be a little thin. And if your iron's too hot, it could burn holes in it. Um, also, I don't recommend ironing it after you've had polyfill in it. Sequins are okay, and this is why I'm going to tell you about my cross stitching because it's going to be kind of the same thing, but I definitely would not do it if you already had pieces in there that you have put polyfill or stuffing, only because it could possibly melt it. So I have laid down this kind of heavy towel. It doesn't have to be too heavy. Sometimes I use two dish towels, and then I've put this dish towel on top of it. My iron is pretty hot. So all I'm gonna do is iron over the dish towel and I'm gonna kind of aim on those spots that have the really heavy crease in there. And like I said, I'm not using any steam, just the hottest setting that I have. And this dish towel is going to kind of act like a barrier. And it's going to take all of those lines out. I have a little bit one of down here. So I'm just going to keep going. You can hold it there for a minute. Like I said, this is your protective layer. Well, my hand wasn't in the way in there see and you can redo this as many times as you need to until you get it how you would like it see I got a little bit one up here which I can work on um how I do my cross stitch and this is something that my mom taught me she does amazing cross stitch and my dad would always make the frames so she would always iron her cross stitch before my dad would frame them for her and she would do this same thing but she would do it after she'd already done the cross stitched but her trick was let's say you're cross stitching this way and the stitches are on top she would actually get a really puffy towel lay the stitches down so you were seeing the back and all the thread she would cover it up and then she would lightly iron it. And what that would do is the stitches would actually kind of lay on the puffy towel and it wouldn't flatten them. It would keep them puffy as she flattened the back and flattened um, the Ada cross stitch fabric in order to make it look really nice and get any you know hoop rings or anything else out like that I also do it with mine if I've put pieces in and I've sequined them and I'm like oh man I really wish I would have like gotten this little piece because sometimes you'll get little tiny round pieces that might have a fold in the end and they're curled and then they don't look right and you want them to lay flat and nicer I'll actually sequin it be like oh man flip my sequence so my sequin cup and beater on the bottom then put my towel over 
and iron it out and it's not going to one melt it or hurt the bead or the sequin in any way so that is how I pretty up all my pieces and my cross stitch